I'm going to read quite a bit more than normal on this, so I'm going to have you be, stay seated uh, during this time. But uh, uh, where'd Brother Coyne go? Did they have to leave? Oh, he's out in the other ones. Okay. I was going to have him. Let, let's go ahead and stand and just pray. I'll have Brother Irwin pray for us. And then you can be seated because I'm going to read quite a bit of verses here in Daniel chapter 9. Just to make sure we have the background here. And I don't want you standing that, that whole time. Usually when I read that much, I start filling in words here and there. And we'll be here for an hour if I do that. So Brother Irwin, would you pray for us? Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for this day that you've given to us, Lord. I thank you for each and every one that is in attendance today, Lord. Those that have burdens in their life, things that they need worked down, Lord. And you know the hearts of each and every one that are here this morning. Um, Lord, I ask it to be if there's one that's not saved here today, that they might take this word today and have a life anew before they walk out into uh, these doors, into the world around them. And I ask you put your hedge about Brother Napper as he brings forth the word that you've laid on his heart. Give him clarity of thought and speech, Lord, to bring things across in a way that we might uh, understand them, Lord. And uh, just ask us, Lord, to have open hearts and ears to your word today. And we ask this all in your precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Just before I begin uh, reading this chapter here, if I had time, which we don't, I was going to look back at the character of Daniel. And my thought in, in both the, the service, even tonight, that we'll be looking at in Daniel chapter 4, was that uh, we need, America needs Daniels today. Amen. And by that I mean the character that Daniel had experienced and also his prayer life. As soon as Brother Irwin mentioned that this morning in Sunday school, I thought, well, here we go. But because uh, we're going to look at this as a prayer of Daniel this morning. But uh, let me just mention a few things as far as his character, just as, as a way of introduction here. I just put some things down this morning uh, during the Sunday school hour that I thought about and Daniel's character here. If you know anything about it, when the, he was first brought into captivity there, all the way back in Daniel chapter 1, where we see that he purposed in his heart there not to defile himself, probably a young man there, maybe 18, 19, 20, somewhere in there. Chapter 9 is all the way through the captivity, so we're looking at a 90-year-old man plus, somewhere right in there. But notice all the way through from that purposing heart as a young man, all the way through, Daniel's character never wavered. And uh, boy, I tell you what, that's something that's needed today. And uh, I'm not trying to be ugly. I, I told Pastor I'd be nice here, uh, fill in the pulpit for him. But if he's your God on, on Sunday and he's your Lord on Sunday, he ought to be your God and, and Lord on Monday Amen. as well. Uh, Daniel never wavered all of those years, and, and so I saw Daniel's character through there, and I was going to point out some things. I was going to outline uh, some of these things, but I'll just give you the thoughts that I had. And, and then not only Daniel's character, but Daniel's challenges. Uh, you'll know from, from all, all the way through, uh, uh, serving under heathen kings and under heathen nations and under a different culture and all of that, had to be a challenge to Daniel, but his character saw him through all those challenges. Amen. You and I face challenges today, especially the laws and all the stuff going on. I hope that our character will see us through those challenges. Amen. I believe it's going to be more as we go along uh, in, in time, as things get more dark and more wicked here. But I thought about Daniel's challenges and, and all that he faced there. And then I, I thought about some of Daniel's conflicts. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the fiery uh, furnace there, and the den of lions that we're going to look at uh, through some of this there. And again, those conflicts that, that Daniel faced all of those 70 plus years through this, but yet his character saw him through those challenges and those conflicts. And then the last one, because of Daniel's consecration, Daniel gave himself to the Lord and he never wavered. I'm just bringing this up because that's exactly what America needs today. Somebody with godly character, somebody that will go through the challenges and the conflicts because they've consecrated themselves to the Lord and they're not going to waver. Daniel never wavered through this all the way through. We have the testimony of Nebuchadnezzar that, uh, that knew that Daniel stood with his God. We had the testimony of, uh, of uh, uh, Cyrus and D D Darius here that knew that he had stood with his God and walked with his God. And therefore, it wasn't something that he did in secret. 
everybody that, that went through had any contact, even those presidents that tried to uh, uh, set him up here that we'll, in, in chapter 6, we'll kind of look at a little, uh, knew about his walk with God. And would to God that America had people that walked with God, that co consecrated their lives and had the character for the challenges and conflicts that they go through, that we'll go through as well. And so with that in mind here, just, just that, bringing that character into chapter 9, let me read these, and I'm looking at Daniel's prevailing prayer this morning. I asked for a little extra time this morning, but I think we'll be all right here. But let me read down through chapter Daniel chapter 9, and I'm going to read to about verse 19. And so just to get the whole uh, story here, we're, we're going to look at the prayer, not as much as the prophecy here, but uh, we're going to look at Daniel's prayer here. So in the first year, Darius, the son of Ashuerus, uh, the seed of the Medes, uh, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year, notice these are very, very important time frames here. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Notice his prayer here. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and committed iniquity and have done, uh, and done, uh, and done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, nor princes, nor our fathers, to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us conf a confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all Israel that are near and that are afar off through all the countries, whether thou hast driven them because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face, to our kings and our prince, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God uh, belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have, there's a reason why Daniel is referring to all of this. He, he's saying, God, you're good, but we have missed it. God, we haven't listened to you, and we haven't trusted you, and we rebelled against you, though you've been good, and though you've spoke to us through the prophets, warning us time after time after time. But in our rebellious, we have neglected that. So verse 10, neither have we obeyed the voice of, thy law, uh, of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel has transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed, and he has confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us, and by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done unto Jerusalem." And as it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayers before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore, as the Lord watched upon uh, the evil and brought it upon us, the Lord our God is righteous in all the, his works which he has done, uh, which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Lord God, thou hast, uh, that has brought Thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten the renown as at this day we have sinned and done and have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from the city of Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because of our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers. Jerusalem and uh, thy people are become a reproach, <coughs> excuse me, a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, O God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O, o my God, incline thy ear and hear, open thine, eye, thine eyes, and behold our desolations in the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our, our uh, supplications before thee for our righteousness, 
but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear, and O Lord, forgive. Uh, 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 o Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake. O my God, for the city of thy people are, call, uh, are, are called by thy name. And then we, we see that the answer came, and we'll look at that as we go. The first thing that I see here, as far as Daniel's prevailing prayer, is going to come from our verse 4. And I prayed unto the Lord my God, and made my confession... And said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant of mercy and mercy to them that love him, to them that keep his commandments. Here in chapter 9, uh, Daniel has this prayer here. You have to watch the book of Daniel, and I know pastor's gone through this, but just as a reminder, uh, these chapters are not in chronological order. Uh, this one is actually chapter 9 we're going to look at is really before uh, chapter 6, and we'll look at that just shortly here. And then you have 7 and 8 that go all the way back to Belshazzar, and that's the visions and everything that Daniel saw that kind of confirmed. Uh, and, and it's because of Daniel's character and his consecration to God that God was able to reveal things to him. And that's important here because my, my first point as far as this is, is this kind of praying is needed today and this kind of character is needed today. Amen? Amen. Uh, America is in trouble. And it's not going to come, the answer is not going to come through the government or the political realm. It's going to come through those that love God and those that walk with God. It's going to come through those people that can pray as Daniel uh, that we see here. So the first thing that I see in uh, chapter 9 here. Is Daniel's, and I'm only going to give you a, a couple of these. I don't have any subs just because of the, the time frame I knew. I want to get to a little more in depth. We're going to look at some verses here as well because I want you to see what Daniel understood and why he was praying this fervently in, in this prevailing prayer that we see here. So the first thing before all of that, and that's why I kind of mentioned his character here, but Daniel's preparation for prayer. Uh, I, I think it's lacking on our part, and really, I'm speaking to myself here when I was doing this outlines. I'm not going to stand here before you and tell you that I'm the one that, uh, that prepares my heart for prayer. I'm the one that see, searches the, the scriptures and, and prepares my heart. I'm not the example here. In fact, uh, as I was going through this note, uh, these notes and, and doing some background work, I pulled out some Oliver B. Green and looked at some things that I read last night as well. I was convicted of my own lack. Uh, so I'm not the one saying, uh, look at me. I, I'm the saying we together need to consider our prayer life because others, because of uh, the situation that we find ourselves in. So the first thing that I see here is Daniel's preparation for prayer. And that's in verse 2, Daniel 9 to, uh, verse 2. In the first year of, the, of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So before Daniel even prayer, prays uh, in this prevailing prayer that we're going to look at, there was some preparation. We find Daniel in the scriptures. And if you and I are going to have any meaningful life or a prayer life, you and I must be in the word of God. That, that's, where, that's where Daniel is going to understand some things. And I, I hope uh, through this, my, my prayer is uh, through this message here, is not only to just outline this prayer, but I hope that you can see the heart that, that uh, Daniel is going to receive here from the Scriptures, the, the heart to pray and the, uh, and the anticipation in this prayer life. Praying should not be boring. Praying ought to be, uh, uh, again, I'm speaking to my own heart, uh, so many times we just come down and just go through a list or go through some things. But if we're understanding the scriptures, there ought to be an anticipation. There ought to be an excitement in our prayer life. And I hope to bring that out in, in Daniel as we get into the next few points here. But Daniel's preparation for prayer here, we find that Daniel's discernment from the scriptures. Those books there are the writings of Jeremiah. So Daniel obviously was in the scriptures here during this time, studying the scriptures and realized that some things that uh, were happening here. So Daniel, in this preparation of prayer, Daniel studied the word of God. Daniel was in the scriptures and was understanding some things. Yes, we have the visions and some of those that uh, all the way back to Nebuchadnezzar's dream and then the visions of seven, chapter 7 and 8 were kind of correlating. They're a little different, but Daniel understood what things were happening because 
because of these dreams, these visions that through Nebuchadnezzar and what God gave Daniel himself there in chapter 7 and chapter 8. So Daniel was realizing some things that were uh, being put in place. Daniel was living these times and that excited him. And I thought about that about one o'clock this morning. I woke up and was just thinking about some things. And I thought about it jumping ahead a little. But if Daniel got excited and, and began to anticipate this prayer that we're, we're going to look at, if I can get to it, this prayer here. If Daniel anticipated some things and was excited because he saw events falling into place, how much more should we, Heritage Baptist Church, be excited all the things that we see happening. We see the fulfillment not only of Nebuchadnezzar, and, uh, which was the head of gold there, but the silver, the Medo-Persian, and then Alexander the Great. We've seen all of this and much, much more. But I'm saying to us, challenging us, that if we're not in the scriptures, then prayer just becomes a prayer sheet. Amen? But it shouldn't be. If we're in the scriptures as, as we ought to, then uh, we'll see some things and God will also reveal things to us that will help us in our prayer life. So I see this Daniel's preparation for prayer. Daniel's discernment from the scriptures, these books or writings of Jeremiah. Daniel studied the word of God. Can I tell you not only that, and we'll move on here, but Daniel believed and acted upon the word of God. Daniel saw what was happening, realized what was happening through the writings of, of Jeremiah, realized that he was living in these times and acted upon those very uh, scriptures that we're reading. Can I tell you the same book that Daniel was reading as Jeremiah is the very same words that we read today, the book of Jeremiah? He was reading the very same things and it prompted his heart, prepared his heart for prayer, how it ought to prompt our hearts and prepare our hearts as well. So I see here in Daniel's prevailing prayer, the first thing that Daniel's preparation for prayer. The second thing, because of that preparation, because of the scriptures, my second point here is Daniel's motivation for prayer. Daniel's motivation for prayer. Hold your place there and uh, we'll come back to that. But turn, let me show you where he's reading here. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 25. Going to look at a couple of these here, but Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 12. As Daniel was preparing himself for this prayer here, God was preparing his heart, I'll put it that way. This is what Daniel was reading here from Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 12 will begin. The Bible says, And it came to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and for the land of the Chaldeans and will make it a perpetual desolations. And I will bring upon uh, that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah the, hath uh, prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve uh, themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to their, uh, the works of their own hands. So when, when Jeremiah is, or when Daniel is reading this letter, these books, these writings that we read in chapter uh, uh, Daniel, chapter two, verse uh, chapter nine, verse two, he said, "And it shall come to pass when seven years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon." Uh, Daniel recognized that Babylon had just fallen. Uh, Daniel, Daniel is living this. Daniel is understanding. I'm in this time frame that Jeremiah that I'm reading. Babylon has just fallen. Daniel's experiencing the, these very things. You don't have to turn there. It's real close there. But in, Jan, in uh, Jeremiah 29:12, uh, this is the letter I, I believe that I outlined here, preached here sometime back. I think I did. But anyway, this is the letter that Jeremiah sent to those in captivity. Again, this is what Daniel would be reading in Jeremiah 29:12. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Daniel is reading these words. He's seeing that Babylon has fallen. He's reading Jeremiah and, and seeing all these events. And it says, then, when all these things happen, then ye shall call upon me, ye shall go and pray. And that's exactly what Daniel did. Daniel, I believe that in my own heart, set this down and realized that Babylon had just fallen. And, and, and Jeremiah's his writings is telling us, you need to go and pray. And that's exactly what Jeremiah did, or Daniel did. 
at that moment, he, he goes and prays here. So it motivated these, these writings here, not only prepared his heart, realizing the steps that are going on. Now, I'm going someplace with this. I'm just trying to hurry. But it motivated Daniel's heart to pray because Daniel was experiencing these very events going on. Daniel realized that God was on the move. Amen? Boy, that ought to excite us when our prayers move the hand of God. Boy, what an exciting thing that you and I, our voice, our prayers, our, our anticipation, my next point here, uh, have the opportunity to move the hand of God. Uh, I'll mention this tonight, but when you see the first chapters, six chapters of, of Daniel here, it's individuals. God gives us a big, big picture through the, the uh, image there of, of Nebuchadnezzar, the gold and the silver and the Alexander the Great and all the way down there. But how, are, how is God going to accomplish those things? He accomplishes those things through human beings. That's how he's going to get those. That's why those uh, events are there. How uh, we see Nebuchadnezzar saved. It's not just a story of Nebuchadnezzar being saved. It's a, it's a story about how God is going to accomplish those visions and dreams that are just being fulfilled. Uh, it's not just about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being protected in a fiery furnace. It's God showing us that through tribulations to come, God is able to protect his children. It's not just Daniel going in the den of lions. It's Satan behind it that we're looking at that wanted to stop the man of God from praying. But God is able to protect those that are praying and God moving through them. So all of these events are, are the big picture up there. But how is God going to get the big picture done? He's going to get the big picture accomplished through means of human beings. Oh yeah, he uses famines and all of that. We see that in Joseph as well. God is able, God is sovereign. But for the most part, the book of Daniel is saying how we could look at these images, these dreams and all that and say, how is God going to make this, this, this dynasty disappear? It disappeared in a night. In one spoken word, Nebuchadnezzar was gone. Belshazzar, his grandson, was gone in one, in one night. Here, here uh, uh, the Medes and Persian were, were on the way, but if you read chapter 7 and 8, we see that that ram, there's a goat coming right on the heels of that, and that goat is going to be Alexander the Great that's going to take him out immediately. We, we look at these and we say, God, how is this dynasty that's been there for years going to disappear? And another one and another one. In the voice of God, it was gone. That's the God we serve. And so it's telling these things when we look at the Antichrist and all the things uh, coming up. Uh, we don't have to worry because our God is in control. God is able. And so God, uh, Daniel understood these things and understood that Babylon had just fallen, understood that the Medo-Persian, that, that uh, uh, silver and those arms of silver were about to take place that he was living in right now. And then he read in Jeremiah 29, you need to go and pray. And that's exactly what motivated Daniel to go and pray. Daniel understood that God's judgment would end at 70 years and this end was about to come. He just saw that. He saw that Babylon would fall and Israel would return back to their land. That motivated him. That motivated Daniel. And that God's people should be in prayer concerning this period of time. Daniel read from Jeremiah, and ye shall go and pray unto me. And that's exactly what motivated Daniel, realizing these times uh, were upon him and that we need to pray. And that set his heart to pray, his motivation there. So Daniel's preparation came from the scriptures. He was studying and reading the scriptures here. Daniel's motivation came uh, because of the events that he learned there, that uh, Babylon would fall. He just witnessed that, that, that you, you need to go and pray that the Medo-Persian Empire was coming and, and, and that the, the nation was going to return uh, back to their land. And all of these things motivated uh, Daniel because he understood there. Daniel knew that God was at work. These, uh, these events were uh, unfolding at this time. Daniel, we already know from the testimony there that Daniel was already a man of prayer, do we not? We all know, we all understand that Daniel was already a man of prayer. But this knowledge, and I'll show you this in a, a second here, but this knowledge motivated him the more. Daniel was about to experience, can I put it, real prayer. Now I want to, I want to uh, slow down and, and emphasize that. We know that Daniel was a man of prayer. 
All the kingdom, everybody recognized that. The, those princes or presidents that set him up uh, uh, knew that he was going to go and pray and uh, that they would find him there. And so I, I'm, I'm saying here that Daniel was a man of prayer, and I'm going to say this slow so it sinks in, but Daniel was about to experience real prayer right now. I mean, real prayer. Watch what happens. Notice this. So I, I look at Daniel's preparation, Daniel's motivation. And now I want to get to the real part of the real meat of the message here. Daniel's anticipation in prayer. Daniel's anticipation in prayer. The first thing I see that I've already mentioned, the time had come. Daniel realized, Daniel knew the time had come for God to move. Babylon had fallen. The Medo-Persian uh, uh, Empire was here. Uh, he understood from the books there that he was to pray. And now the time had come. I have a note down here in my notes. May we learn to be on the lookout how God is working by viewing current events. Uh, may we, I thought about, uh, may we realize an anticipation in our prayers, maybe uh, the preparation of scriptures and motivation. May we see that God is moving at Heritage Baptist Church. I thought about the land. Why the land? Why the buildings? Uh, why, why all of the, the last couple of years what God has had? That ought to, those current events, those events happening at Heritage Baptist Church right now ought to motivate us to pray. God, what's going on? Uh, God, we need to be in our place. God, what are you doing? Uh, sad to say, and uh, uh, it's the Sunday crowd, so sad, sad to say that uh, most of the Sunday crowd won't even be back tonight. Sad to say. But that's just the way it is. Every church that I go in, the Sunday, night, uh, Sunday morning crowd is never ever the Sunday uh, night crowd. And so I'm, I'm wondering there, are they in the scriptures? I'm wondering there, are they viewing things in, in the mind of God? Or are, are they anticipating God working? Do they want to pay, be a part of the workings of God? I, I don't know about you, but I love being involved when I see God working. Myrna and I have had the experience and the opportunities to see God move in many of the meetings. And I'm talking about 11, 11.30, midnight, still going on. People at the altar. I mean, just, just uh, God moving. Boy, that's exciting times. I enjoy that. Amen. I, I want to be a part of that. Anytime God moves like that, I, I want to be there. Amen. And we will if our heart's prepared. Amen. And we will if there's some anticipation here. So, so Daniel, we, we need to look at some scriptures here, but Daniel's anticipation in prayer. Daniel realized the time had come. God, uh, Daniel knew the time had come and God was on the move. And that prompted him to pray all the more. I put down here, not only the time had come, but no time to waste. No time to waste. That's why I read in Jeremiah 29, 12, uh, uh, ye shall go and pray. Daniel didn't hesitate at all because Daniel understood what was going on. God was moving and it was no time to waste on Daniel. I believe that as soon as he read those scriptures, he was praying. He was on his face before God, realizing that God was on the move. And I want to show you some things as we go from here. So Daniel was living in these times. Not only had Babylon fallen, but the Medes and the Medo-Persian were in power here that I already mentioned here. So Daniel knew by the vision of Babylon, that head of gold, that was Nebuchadnezzar, and the Medo-Persian here, the breast and the arms of silver, Daniel understood that this, this vision here from Nebuchadnezzar that he interpreted there was already taking place. Boy, I don't know about you, but that had to get Daniel's heart excited. I mean, that he's actually witnessing these very things happening here. And that's why I say there was no time to waste. Daniel went to seek prayer because he understood these times here. That's why I made it very, very important here that as far as Daniel, that first part in the first year of Darius. Because Daniel understood some things. I'll point this out here in a second here. So, so the time, this Daniel's anticipation in prayer, the time had come. No time to waste. The third point here, Daniel's prayer life transcending. Daniel's prayer life, I had to look that word up. You didn't think I knew that, huh? But I did. It's not Pastor Ross up here that's a walking encyclopedia or, or dictionary. That's not me. I was good in sports and they gave me straight A's and I couldn't spell straight A's. But anyway, <laughs> I had to look that word up. But I know what it is. It was about to take new heights. 
Daniel was a man of prayer. I, I let that sink in. But now he's going to go to new heights because of these events here. Daniel's prayer life was about to gain new heights. Now watch this. Daniel, I've said it was a man of prayer. We've already mentioned that. But these moving, uh, these moving of, event, of, event, of events brought new excitement or anticipation for Daniel. He was expecting some things now that was going to happen. That ought to be our prayer life. That, that ought to motivate us that when we go to prayer, we are expecting God to move. Because we know what's going on. We, we are in anticipating because Daniel knew things were going on. But yet there's certain things that Daniel also knew that had not transpired yet. But Daniel's prayers are going to be the ones that move the hand of God. Now, now watch what I'm talking about here. So these, uh, these uh, moving events are brought new expectation to Daniel. Daniel, as I said, was about to experience real prayer. Hold your place there and, and turn with me to Isaiah, another book that Daniel would have known very, very well. Isaiah chapter 44. Daniel knew Babylon had just fallen. Daniel had know, known that Nebuchadnezzar, actually Belshazzar, uh, the grandson of, Belsha of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, I started to outline that too. That's a very interesting uh, subject in that. And now Cyrus here. So uh, Isaiah 44, look with me at verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that uh, formed thee uh, from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, that maketh the uh, diviners mad, that turneth wise men. This is Isaiah. Now listen what he's saying here. This is 150 years prior to all of these events. Turneth wise men backward and, and, and maketh their knowledge foolish, that confirmeth the word of his servant, that performeth his counsel, the counsel of his messengers, uh, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, uh, inhabited and uh, to the cities of Judah, ye shall be built. Ye shall be built. Notice what, and I will raise, uh, raise up the decayed places thereof, that saith to the deep, be dry, and I will make, and I will dry up the rivers, that saith to Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure. Listen to this, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built. What are you talking about? Jerusalem was built then. Jerusalem had not been destroyed at that time. This is 150 years prior to all of that event. So just think, and the, the people in the, in the temple, the foundation shall be laid. The, the people there at that time of Isaiah's mentioning this must have thought Isaiah was mad. What are you talking about building the temple? It's right here. What are you talking about laying the foundation? It's right here. Who's this Cyrus? We've never even heard of him. What are you talking about? But Daniel did. Daniel saw all of that, that the temple was gone and the foundations were gone. In fact, Daniel even knew the name of Cyrus. As soon as he read Isaiah, I'm thinking, man, Cyrus is on the scene. He's the king. All of this has taken place. And Daniel is the one that understood these things from the scriptures. And that's why I'm saying Daniel's prayer, a prayer life was trans, transcending, transcending at this time, being lifted higher at this time because he understood this is exactly what's going on. The people of Isaiah's day must have thought Isaiah was crazy. What are you talking about? Building the temple and the foundations and Cyrus and all this. But, I, but Daniel understood this is exactly what's going on. But he also understood there was still one thing that was missing here and when Isaiah wrote about these events of the people of God as I said must have thought he was mad 150 years before his time but now this was happening and Cyrus was king uh, but up to this time no command had been given to rebuild you following me now watch this turn with me to the book of Ezra When I didn't mark. Ezra chapter 1. And now, and now in the first year of Cyrus, 
king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus. Can I add here by the prayers of Daniel? Amen. Where did that, where did that stirring of the heart come from? Daniel understood all of this was happening. Daniel understood that the, the 150 years from Isaiah before this happened, that uh, the temple would be de destroyed, that the foundations would be taken, that this Cyrus would come on the scene and, and, and make proclamation. But Daniel understood also living this time that yes, Cyrus was here, but there has not been a proclamation sent out yet. No wonder Daniel anticipated. No wonder there was a motivation. No wonder his prayer life was, was sent up even more, realizing that this is the moment. And I believe Daniel fervently prayed for Cyrus to move uh, toward uh, uh, this decree this, uh, to send out here. And then in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, the word of the Lord of the, by, the, by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing and there you go the answer of Daniel's prayer Amen. Daniel moved uh, the, the hand of God to stir this up because he realized uh, Babylon is gone he realized that the people of God were going to be returning back he already knew the temple was gone down and the, the foundations because he was part of that first captivity there in Babylon when Nebuchadnezzar came and destroyed all of that Daniel realized all of that and, and he, he understood from the book of Isaiah here that uh, God is going to move Cyrus but he's looking at Cyrus and hasn't been moved yet he hasn't heard of any decree yet therefore I need to pray that God moves Cyrus to make this decree and there it happened in the first year of his reign. You got to look at some of the scriptures here and the timings of what's going on here to understand. But Daniel understood from the scriptures, all of this was before him. And Daniel's prayers is what God used to move Cyrus to put that proclamation out. How exciting that would be, Heritage Baptist Church, for you and I in our prayer life to move the hand of God towards Jeanette. Amen. All the drugs and all the things going on. Uh, to, to, to realize, to, to use our buildings and our properties here to reach our community, to not only just have a tent meeting, to have a tent meeting, to have a tent meeting, to realize, to let people know, hey, there's a church here that cares for their community. Amen. We ought to do all that we can to pass the first... Uh, had the first uh, date there, July something, that we were going to be down at the conference. And I, I told him, I said, you got to move the date. You're not going to have the first tent meeting with me gone. I want to be a part of that. Forget Randy Taylor, preach Roger Knapper, forget all that. I want to be a part of that, amen? I want our community to know, yeah, we need to have some music or some food. You say, oh, they'll come to food. Hey, let them come to food as long as they get here and hear the gospel and let them know that there's a church here that cares about them. All this stuff about these programs and all that, and I understand you can go overboard on that. Uh, I, I'm not minimizing them, but you've got to let some people know that somebody loves them. Amen. Somebody cares for them. Somebody cares for those children. That's right. I want to be a part of that. And so we see here, Daniel was excited. His anticipation was overwhelming as he realized in his prayer time that he was at an opportunity. I haven't seen Cyrus move yet. I wonder what he did when he heard the decree go out as it went out through all the land. He was probably shouting it out. He was having a fit, what we call running the altars. So we see here, not only transcendent, I got to hurry but Daniel's, I call this tenacity in prayer. The tenacity in prayer. Why? Because as I said, Daniel chapter 9 comes uh, uh, before chapter 6. So look with me back in Daniel chapter 6. You know it very well. Daniel's prayers are already going on. Daniel's praying for Cyrus to move. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, uh, which uh, uh, should be over the whole kingdom. You understand what's going on here? This Daniel was preferred above the others. The presidents here uh, put this decree out and go to Cyr or Darius. By the way, Darius was just kind of a puppet individual here. Cyrus was the real king. Darius, and that's why he, they, they kind of tricked him, if you want to put it that way, uh, to put this pro proclamation out. But it was not really... I don't even know. I put in my own notes here. I'll stick to them. These presidents may not have understood what was happening but uh, and, and why 
they were used here to put this decree out uh, uh, for Daniel and his praying or everything. I don't know if they understood all of this. I do know that they, they uh, didn't like this foreigner, if you want to put it that way, uh, this captive uh, coming in and being put over them. There might have been some envy there, but I do know that the devil understood Daniel was praying. And the, Dan and the devil wanted to do one thing and one thing only, and that stopped the man of prayer, right. the man of God. So what happens? This decree goes out. I believe with all my heart this den of lions was to stop the man of God from praying. Amen? But did he stop? No. That's why I call it tenacity. He moved on. I don't care what you do. You're not going to stop me. I know what God is doing. I know God is moving. I understand the things from the scriptures. I know God is about to move. You can put me in the den of lions. You can do all, all you want. But I know God is moving. Uh, my, my point is in that is saying God, uh, Daniel, uh, his faith in God, uh, realized that no matter what, my God is able. That's what the, the three Hebrews said in the, the fiery furnace as well. Uh, God will deliver us, but if he doesn't, I want you to know, King, we're, we're not going to bow down to your image. Our God is able. Amen? Oh, where does that come from? Where, where does that tenacity in prayer come from? Where does that transcendent, where does that higher motive come from? The, the preparation and the motivation and the, and the anticipation, where does all that come from? It comes from knowing God. Do we know God that way? Is, is our faith in God in such a way that we understand God reveals things to us? God, God's not going to reveal all this to Daniel if he wasn't the, the man of God and had the character that Daniel had. He would have never showed all these visions. In fact, it goes all the way through the first coming, the second coming, all the way to the end of the Gentile age. It, it goes all the way in. Daniel was, was, was gifted and given some great truths because God could trust him. Because God knew him, and he, he knew his God. So I see here, the enemy hates praying Christians, especially real, I put that in emphasis, real, pray, real experience, praying that we see here. This kind of praying moves the hand of God. Uh, I've got a couple more, I'll just give them to you. Uh, Daniel's contrition and prayer, Brother Irwin mentioned that as far as, uh, that's uh, as far as a regret, remorse, Daniel goes through, we've, we've read the prayer, that's why I wanted to read it, mentioned sin over and over and over again. Why? Because when God moves, sin has to be dealt with. Amen. Sin will always hinder God moving, right. always. And so, uh, so we see here this contrition here, this, this remorse here, Daniel's confession of sin and Daniel's sorrow of sin. But not only that, but through this prayer, uh, not only is, is Daniel mentioning prayer that we have sinned and we have rebelled against all this, but uh, along with that, there was also a focus on the Lord. I'll just give them to you just for the sake of time. Uh, God, uh, God is, re, is to be revered in verse 4. Uh, God to be trusted. He's talking about keeping covenant and mercy there also in verse 4. In, in back in, uh, we're back in Jan, uh, Daniel chapter 9. Our, our verses, verse 4 is to be revered and trusted. In verses 7 and 16, it's a God of righteousness and holiness. In verse 9, it's a God of mercy and forgiveness. Uh, all, all through these scriptures, from 4 all the way down, uh, the, the focus is, yes, on sin, but it's also a focus on the Lord. God, we've done this, but God, you're good. God, we've done this, but God, you're merciful. God, we've done this, but you're righteous. All of that is mentioned, my last point, though the word is not mentioned in all the book of Daniel. I looked it up to make sure. But a God of all grace. This is all of grace through uh, the word, even though the word of God, uh, the word grace is not found in this prayer or in the book of Daniel, but it is all God's grace. Folks, I'm just saying that, that when you and I want to uh, anticipate the hand of God moving, there has to be a searching of sin. We've got to remove sin. There has to be a removal. There has to be not only a removal of sin, but there has to be an acknowledgement of, God, you're good. God, we don't deserve any of this, what you've done for Heritage Baptist Church. It's all because of your grace. It's because your mercy. It's because, God, we, we can reach Jeanette and, and Greensburg and others because, God, you are a God of righteousness and holiness. God, you're a God of mercy. You do forgive. You pardon. That's what we're here for, church. And so we see Daniel's prayer mentioned that as well. And then the last one, not only Daniel's contrition here, but Daniel's confirmation. 
It said in verse 21, Daniel 9, 21, Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me. I, I looked at word touched. I, I can't get into it. But Daniel was touched two times by Gabriel. Boy, I don't know about you, but that thrilled my heart. How would you like to be touched by heaven? Because of your prayer life. Huh? Touched. So we see here uh, Daniel's confirmation. The answer of Daniel's prayer. The time of Daniel's uh, answer. The evening oblation. Let me, let me just point this out real quick here. Uh, down, going down through. I didn't mark this one. 21. In understanding. It came in verse 21. While I was speaking in prayer... Even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly, fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation or the evening sacrifice. It's interesting because at this time, there was no evening, evening sacrifice. There was no temple. There, there was no priesthood. There was no sacrifices going on. But the point is, during this time period, uh, 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 there, no sacrifice, no temple, no priesthood was going on. But this, this is mentioned in type only. And the whole point of this being mentioned, it's mentioned in other places too, but for the sake of time, all prayers are answered because of Christ. The Lord's atonement prevails throughout time. Why should God hear our prayers and forgive our sins? Because of Christ. Because of the sacrifice. Because of the atonement. Daniel's ground for praying and Daniel's answer came during this time in type, though it wasn't actually going on. This evening oblation, it was because of the sacrifice of Christ. Can I tell you, church, all prayers, all meeting with God, all, all of our access is through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Without this evening oblation, there is no access to God. It's only on the grounds of and the merits of the Lord Jesus Christ that we have not only access, but we have our prayers answered. Without, without the, the sacrifice, without this evening oblation, there is no touch from heaven. There is no touch from God. There's no answer prayers. We have to come through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Daniel's prevailing prayer. My challenge, and I'm done, my challenge, church, is do we not only have, but do we even desire to move the hand of God? Do we, do we have an anticipation from the scriptures seeing that God is moving and do we want to be a part of that moving? Do we even desire? I, would, I was going to mention, uh, I haven't talked to pastor or anything about it, but from this, I, I know that there's a need here in our communities to pray. If I'm in town, I, I would... If there was enough that wanted to come, I would make sure the doors are open. Brother Irwin and, and Pastor would have to give permission, but I'd make sure. But church, I, I believe just looking at America, the world and all this, I believe it's time for us to pray. Amen. I believe it's time for us to get serious and pray. Prisons are shutting down almost daily with all this, well, I won't get in, all this stuff going on. You know, I already read from the things in Canada uh, if, if parents don't put their children in or, or don't uh, make mention of these things, I won't get into that either, that uh, Canada can actually take their ch children away from them and protect them from their parents. It's coming. We need to pray. We need to pray.